What's up guys, welcome to Rotor Riot and welcome back to Learn to FPV. Today we're going to be talking about charging, how to charge your batteries, how to use the different types of chargers that are out there, and how to do it safely. The concepts and the actual process of charging batteries is very simple, but the potential for fire from these things is very real, so you need to take it serious. It's, there's, not, there's only a few different things that you need to get right and you'll never have a problem, but it's, it only takes one time to overlook something, do something wrong, or be negligent and your house could be gone. There's been people in this hobby that are very prominent, been doing it a long time, and they know what they're doing, but one day they decided just to like slack off, not really pay attention, not be around, do something wrong, and they've had fire. So it's very important to be safe with batteries. So a few things to know about batteries themselves. A couple terms you're gonna see is C. You'll see a C rating, a charge rating, and that's also gonna be in C. What C means is capacity. So the C is, stands for the capacity of the battery. The, the way that the batteries are rated is in milliamps. So this is a 1000 milliamp battery. It takes 1000 milliamps to get to one amp. So if someone says charge that battery at one C for a 1000 milliamp battery, that means charge it at one amps. Uh, this one over here is a 1500 milliamp battery. So Again, very simple. You take the 1500, you move the decimal, 1.5 amps is a 1C charge rating. Don't confuse the charge rating with the discharge rating. So on this one, it says 120C. Don't charge this at 120 amps. That's not how that works. That rating is the discharge rating. So it's saying that this battery is capable of pushing out 120 times its capacity. So 1.5 times 120. I'm not a math whiz. You guys do the math on that. Um, some batteries will have on it what the recommended charge rate is. Some won't. The basic gist of that is if you're not in a rush, you're not going to fly right now, charge your batteries at 1C. So take the capacity of the battery, move the decimal over, charge it at that rate. So for this 1000 milliamp battery, charge it at one amp. For the 1500, 1.5. At a 1C charge rate, it's typically gonna take about 30 to 40 minutes to charge that battery. If you need to get your battery charged a little bit faster, you can go up to two or three C charge rate. I would say a three C charge rate is pretty much the standard like this is a quicker charge rate that's still safe. Charging your batteries at a really high amperage rate is not the thing that's gonna catch a fire. It could, maybe, I've never seen it happen. There's usually other factors that cause the battery to go up in flames. The thing you really need to worry about is if you are impatient and you're charging your batteries really fast, that's usually just gonna degrade the battery and you're gonna get less cycles out of the battery. And if you're wanting to fly a lot and you have, you know, 10 or 15 batteries, it gets really expensive. So it's smart to take care of your batteries, make them last and get hundreds of uses out of them. Um, another thing about the batteries you need to understand is the S. So S stands for series. This is a 6S battery. That means inside of this one battery, there's actually six individual cells. And those cells are run in series. So also to avoid confusion, it's S because it stands for series and because C is already used for capacity. So instead of being six cells, it's six cells in series. This one's a four cell battery or 4S battery. That's important because that's you're gonna have to match that setting in the charger and it's also gonna determine what charger you need. Most drones are gonna run anywhere from a one to six S battery and most chargers can do those ranges. But who knows, maybe you have something that runs on an 8S battery and the charger doesn't support it, it only goes up to 6S. So in that case, you need to look for a charger that can handle up to 8S. Okay, let's do a little quick look overview on the different types of chargers. So you're gonna see a lot of different chargers out there that look very similar to this. Um, this is what's commonly referred to as the four button charger because there's a ton of them out there But they all have these four buttons. They all work really similar. I'm going to show you exactly what they do in a little bit and The other thing to take a look at on the charger is what kind of connections does it have so 
What kind of connection does it have to power it from the wall? And what kind of connection does it have going from the charger to your battery? So both of these two on the left, they're gonna use what's called a banana plug. So it's this type of connection. These are gonna plug into here, you match up the colors. That's the connection. But these ISDT chargers, and I'm sure some other ones work like this, they have XT60 connectors on both sides. So that's the same type of connector that typically comes on the battery. So it's just important to know that when you're buying a charger, what type of connectors you're going to need. And if you can, look at the product page and try to figure out what it's gonna come with. Because some chargers will come with the exact connectors you need. You can take it out, plug it in your batteries and start charging. Other times you might need to make one or, or buy one that's gonna work for you. The other thing to know is whether it's an AC or DC charger. So this charger, it's an AC charger. That means that you can plug the power cord straight into this and plug it into a wall. And this one is like one of those computer type power cords. This one is gonna take an adapter and have like a barrel plug. So it's just good to know. Over here, we have a DC charger. So this thing is, doesn't have a power supply built into it. It has an XD60 plug. So you need some sort of power supply. This is my power supply. This actually comes from a server and that I just buy this off eBay. There's a little bit of modification you have to do. Put an XD60 on it, you can power that. We also have this guy in the store. This makes it a little bit easier. There's no modification you need to do. You just screw on these terminals to get your power cable set up. You screw down your XT60 and boom, you're, you're in the game. Hook this up to this, you got power. Okay, so let me talk about some of the things that could go wrong. Um, first one I would say, if you do have a charger that has these type of banana jacks on them, you need to understand that if you have your battery connected to one side and you touch the other sides, that's going to short out the battery. So it could cause sparks, it could cause fire, it could blow up the battery. It's just not good. So if you have this thing plugged into the charger with your battery, don't unplug that from the charger. Make sure you take the battery and unplug that first before this, because again, you don't want those touching. Another huge thing that you have to get correct, which I'll show you when I show you how to use the charger, is you need to set it to the right type of chemistry. Not all batteries work exactly the same. So a lithium polymer battery, it's pretty much dead at 3.7 volts per cell. So again, there's six cells in here. Each and every one of them is gonna be at 3.7 when it's dead. When it's fully charged, each of those cells is gonna be 4.2 volts. Now there's different types of battery chemistries and they're not, they don't all match those numbers. So sometimes their full voltage could be higher. So if you tried to charge this thing on a different chemistry, there's a chance that it's not going to stop when it needs to at 4.2 volts per cell. It's going to keep going. And that's when it gets really ugly. The battery will swell up. It's going to get really ugly and then it's going to just burst into flames. And I've had one of those situations and the flames were up to the ceiling. It wasn't fun. And what happened to me was, is the next tip, I wasn't balance charging. You wanna always balance charge the battery. That's what these wires here are for. So each of these wires is gonna run into each of the individual cells. And by balancing it, it's making sure that each cell has an equal voltage to each other. You don't want your batteries to be out of balance and you don't wanna charge them without a balance lead. Because in my case, what had happened was the balance leads were chopped off and I had been charging it, just you know, regular charge, no balance for a while and getting away with it, it was okay. But then at some point, one of those cells in the battery, it died, it, it quit. It stopped being able to take a charge. Since I didn't have the balance plug plugged in, the charger didn't know that that one cell wasn't taking a charge. It was just going until it saw the voltage that a full battery should have. So what that means is this one wasn't taking a charge. The rest of them were getting overcharged to compensate for that. So pretty ugly incident. Luckily, no one was hurt. Luckily, I didn't burn the whole building down, but I definitely learned never charge without balance charging. Always balance charge every single time. Aside from that, things can just happen. Like. It might not make any sense that you might have had a fire and not even know exactly what went wrong. And in my case, when I did have a fire, had I just been right next to it, it would have never happened. I could have reached over and hit stop. I could have unplugged it, got the battery to a safe place. 
So my last safety tip is just never assume that everything is gonna go fine. Definitely stay within a close proximity and every couple minutes, take a look, maybe touch the battery, make sure everything's fine. Don't leave your batteries charging unattended. Definitely don't set up a whole bunch of batteries charging and go to bed. That's a terrible idea because you could wake up with a house full of smoke or you could just never wake up again. I mean, I don't want to be, I don't want to scare you here, but this is to be taken seriously. Do not sleep or just leave your house with your batteries charged. It's not worth it. Just wait till you have the time and monitor them while you're charging. So that's generally it. That's all you really need to look out for to make sure that you're going to have safe charging. So monitor your batteries, check the balance plug from time to time, make sure each cell is, you know, pretty on par with each other. If you have a battery that's going out of balance from cell to cell, really take your time, charge it really slow and really watch it. Always make sure that your charger is set up to the right setting so you're not going to overcharge that battery and just always, always, always stay within a proximity while you're charging. Keep an eye on it. Don't, don't just walk away while you're charging. Okay, with that, I'm gonna go into this charger and walk you through the menus and just show you the basics of how to get charging. Let's go ahead and plug in the cables that we're gonna need. Almost every four button charger will have banana jack inputs. Depending on the one you buy or what type of battery that you're actually using, it may or may not come with the right connector on the other end. So this one I actually made. Um, the way to plug it in is very simple. Just match up the colors, black to black, red to red. You're also going to need a balance plug. This charger actually comes with a little board that's going to have one slot for each different cell battery, two through six cell. But I'm not really sure where that's at and this will work too. So you can just either plug this straight in or sometimes, like I said, it'll come with that board. You'll plug that in, plug your battery into that. But either way, you need a balance plug. Let's plug that in. So once again, main battery connector, balance connector. Very important to balance, always balance. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug the battery in. We're gonna be charging a six cell battery here today. Now, first thing you need to do is make sure that you are on the right chemistry of battery. So already it's on the correct one, LiPo, but just to show you the other options, there's Lilo, Life, LIHV. This is for nickel metal hydride batteries, um, NICAD, and lead acid. I'm not even sure what that does. We don't need that. We don't need that. Don't need that. So LiPo battery, that's the correct one. This is actually really important, probably the most important setting of the whole charger because different batteries are going to have a different end voltage so if you were to set this up for nickel metal hydride, it's not going to stop when this battery is actually full because it's expecting to run it to a higher voltage. So you, it's really important to make sure you're picking LiPo. And go ahead and hit start. Now here, if we cycle through, these are the different types of charging and discharging modes. It's already on the one we want. We want balanced charge. But just to show you what else you can do, your storage. So a storage charge will be Wherever the battery is at, it's going to set each cell in the battery to 3.8 volts per cell. That's the nominal voltage that batteries like to rest at. There's discharge. So this would be like for a bad battery that you want to get rid of. You can set the voltage that you want to discharge it down to and just get all the juice out of it. Charge, I would only use for a one cell because you could charge a battery without balancing it, but that's another way to get a fire. Uh, because if one of these cells is not accepting a charge, it's just gonna keep charging the other cells until it sees the voltage it wants, but that's just gonna overcharge them, it's gonna swell up, it's gonna burst into flame. So always balance charge. Balance charge is what we want. Now, it's set up for 4S. That means four cells in series. This is a 6S battery. This is an important setting to set up correctly, but most chargers you're gonna come across are gonna have safety features built in. 
So even though these don't match, if I were to try to start it, it's telling me the voltage is too high. So it won't let me mess that up anyways, but let's, we have to, we have to actually set that up correct. So hit the start button, see how it's flashing. We'll change that to 6S. Go ahead and hit start. Now the C is again for capacity. And this isn't really necessary, but this is just giving you that 1C charge rate. So I actually have a 1000 milliamp battery. So if I change that to 1000, it's automatically giving me a one amp charge. So that's my 1C charge rating. So from there, everything is set up correct. I can just hold the start button. Hit one, one more time to confirm. And it's charging. It's very simple. Again, just stay near it, make sure everything's fine, maybe touch it every now and then, make sure it's not getting warm or anything, which it really shouldn't. And that's the basics of how to use a four button charger. Um, again, like I was talking about, if I wanted to charge this battery a little faster, I would hit this until it goes into the amps and maybe increase that to like three to four amps. Um, Another thing about the C rating and the charge, when it says a 3C charge rate, it's not necessary to be like exactly three. So I don't have to go just to three amps. If it was 3.3, not a big deal. That doesn't really matter. So hold start, confirm, and it's charging. Okay, that was the four button charger. It's very simple. Let's move on to the one I actually use, the ISDT T8. Okay, so here I have my ISDT charger set up. It's gonna do basically everything the same as what the other charger did. It's just laid out a little bit different. And overall, in my opinion, I would say it's a little bit easier to use. Um, so the main difference you'll notice is it does not take these banana type jacks. It actually has an XT60 connector built into it. So assuming you're using XT60s on your batteries, you can actually just plug the battery directly into the charger. Now for the balance leads, you'll notice that there's some notches. Those are gonna correspond with the notches on the balance lead of your battery. So you want those facing down and you wanna start at the left. So there's also a little icon here that kind of lets you know this is the side you need to start on. So all the way to the left with the tabs facing down. And as soon as I plug that in, you're going to notice it reads out the voltage of each individual cell automatically. I really like that. Uh, so on this charger, you're going to press the middle button to get into the menu. And this is basically everything you would need to set up. One of the cool things that makes it a little bit faster, a little bit easier to use is the ISDT chargers will automatically detect how many cells of a battery you're using. So if I were to plug in a 6S, that's just going to jump up to 6, 2, whichever one. So that's one less thing to worry about. And <clears throat> if you did have it set up wrong, it's just like the other charger, there's safety features built in. It's not going to let you charge it wrong. So your battery type is up at the top, just like the other one, there's different types. And this is super important. Make sure you get this right. Make sure it's on LiPo if you're charging a LiPo. Um, on this charger, you can also change at which, at which voltage is done. I would recommend just keep that on 4.2. That's why there's a thumbs up there because that's really what it should be. If you want to get risky, you can push it a little over, but I would definitely recommend just keep it at 4.2. And then here's the current that you're going to charge at. So I think it goes... This charger goes all the way up to 30 amps. I wouldn't recommend doing that on just one battery. Uh, let's again, let's keep it to our around 3C. Or in fact, I'm in no rush, so we could just charge at 1C. 1C on a 1500 milliamp battery is 1.5 amps. A little fast for me. 1.5, hit enter, go down to start very simple now it's charging and again I'll say it again 
don't leave and just trust that this is just going to be fine. It probably will, but if it's not, you're going to have a mess to come back to. So keep an eye on it until it's done. Okay, so the last thing we're going to talk about is parallel charging. What parallel charging is, is charging more than one battery at once. So if you remember, I said a 1C charge rate, it's going to take about a half hour to 40 minutes. So if you have 10 batteries, you might not want to wait five hours to charge all those batteries. So a way to get those batteries charged a little bit quicker is through parallel charging. You're almost always going to see parallel boards. I don't have one of those, but we'll put a picture right here. But what I prefer to use is these parallel cables. Simply because they're more flexible. It's a lot easier to get a bunch of batteries plugged into this. Whereas if you have a parallel board, it's going to be a small board. You need to get all your batteries kind of in a tight space. But there's pros and cons to that too. So the parallel cable, it's very easy to use. It's more flexible. But parallel boards, A, they have balance ports for 2 through 6S batteries. So for me, my parallel balance cable, this is only for 4 cell. So if I want to charge that 6 cell, I have to have a separate one of these for that. And B, there's a lot of parallel boards out there that have a little more protection. They have fuses in them, so if current spikes up and something's going wrong, the fuse will blow and it'll just stop taking in that current. So, the way that parallel charging works, basically, these two wires are split off into all these wires. So when I have six batteries plugged into those, it essentially becomes one big battery. That's how the charger sees it. It's just like taking all those batteries and actually making them one and plugging that in. So now when we were talking about our 1C or 2C or 3C charge rate, the way to factor that is you just add the batteries together. So this is a 1000 milliamp battery. Once 1C charge rate is one amps. If I have six of them plugged together, my 1C charge rate becomes six amps. The basic difference between parallel and series Parallel adds your capacity together. Series adds your voltage together. Parallel charging also comes with its own sort of danger. The main thing that will instantly cause a fire is when you hook up batteries in parallel, you cannot mix voltages or different cell counts of batteries. If I were to plug in a six cell and a four cell together, it's not an even amount of power. So what's gonna happen is the current from this battery is going to flow into this battery really fast and it's going to cause this one to blow up. So you cannot mix. If you're going to charge 6 cell batteries in parallel, you can only be using 6 cell. 4 cell batteries in, in parallel, only 4 cell. That was my other LiPo fire I've had. I've had two. One was because I wasn't balanced charging and one was because I had a parallel board with a 6S battery plugged into it. And I just, I don't know, I didn't notice it. I wasn't paying attention. I took a three cell and I plugged it in and pretty much immediately it just went up, went up in flames. So number one thing with parallel charging is you cannot mix voltages or different cell batteries. Number two is you should generally have the batteries pretty close to the same voltage. I don't think this one's as important. You're gonna see a lot of people tell you that they will only parallel charge batteries if every cell is exactly the same on every battery. The, the main problem, here's what's happening. So like I said, when you connect all your batteries together in parallel, it pretty much sees it as one battery. The analogy I like to make to people, it's like having six buckets, but each of those buckets is connected at the bottom with hoses. So even if they weren't exactly the same every cell, it's just like filling up those six buckets by filling up one on one side. Over time, they're all gonna be at the same level. So it's the, basically the same exact thing's gonna happen with batteries. If you have one that's at 3.9 on every cell and you have one that's at like 3.6, if you connect them together and let it sit, they're both gonna be right about in the middle at like 3.7. The problem though is, especially more on balance boards, the, the balance cables can probably handle it a little bit better. Once you plug in these balance leads, you're now connecting the two batteries and current is like water. It's gonna flow and it's gonna take the less least resistance. So sometimes what could happen is if you were to have a balance board and you plug two balance leads in that are way off on voltage, 
that current's gonna rush from the higher charge battery to the lower one. And it could blow up your balance board if the traces on that circuit board are not rated to take that much current flowing through. You could probably get away with a little bit more on this because the wire is probably rated for a little bit higher. But in general, just keep them relatively close to each other. Don't, I mean, you wouldn't, there's no reason to have a fully charged battery and a fully dead battery together anyways, because the fully charged one, it doesn't need to be charged. But that's the main thing you want to stay away from. Don't, don't have one that's almost charged and one that's really low mixed together. Uh, like I showed you on the ISDT charger, the cool thing is, as soon as you plug this in, you can see what the voltage of each cell in the battery is. So when I'm gonna parallel charge and I have a whole bunch of batteries laid out on the table, I just take them one at a time, I plug them in, I see what the voltage is. If one's an outlier and it's way different, I'll just kind of set that one to the side. If I find another one that's similar to that voltage, I'll add it to that pile and I'll charge those together later. So that's gonna do it for charging. I hope you guys learned something. I hope you guys are gonna be safe out there. I don't wanna hear about anybody having any fires. That's definitely not a fun thing to have happen to you. So be safe, take it easy. Don't uh, charge at a really high rate unless you're really in a rush. And if you're in a rush, don't push it too hard. It's not good for the batteries and it's, it's just a little more risky. So thanks for watching and this is Learn to FPV.